Okay, going to do the last, last, last customers. Uh, Browning Mark III, a uh, good customer. Uh, dropped it off local. You know, don't have to deal with shipping and damages and all that packing and all that kind of crap. So um, he picked up his tram and um, dropped off this Mark III, not transmitting. I already did one on the relay. Um, this radio had three problems. Um, it was um, showing output on the meter, the uh, forward, and the reflected of the RF meter, but it wasn't showing any output or very little on the um, at the actual antenna or output where it's supposed to be at the jack um, or on a watt meter. So I'm like, well, if it's showing on the um, internal meter only thing in between that meter and I already did this one but again that's the meter board right there and then it goes into the relay and then it goes out the relay into the um, um, SO239 so if it's uh, good at the meter and the only thing in between it is the relay it's a bad relay right or a bad wire um, wires that look good so we burnished the relay and away we it went it got power um, these radios again don't like to sit they like to be exercised they like to be talked on they like to be in a non-smoking climate controlled environment they don't want to be sitting in the garage for uh, a year five years ten years you know getting humidity and heat and temperature changes and dust and corrosion and all that they like to be talked on exercise and keyed on that will help with relay and other mechanical problems they like to be exercised as Rick Mish who is a 390 R390A Collins guru they like to have the knobs turned and twisted and power going through them that makes them better it's like a car you don't leave a car sitting for you know five years and all that you you start it up you run it you put it on the freeway you give it some gas it's the same with the uh, radios so anyway the um, cleaning or burnishing of the relay that's the socket on the bottom side uh, fixed the uh, transmit at least the RF part of it but it had no audio then and originally it had all original caps in it so we said well even before we traced that we got to get rid of the original cap so we recapped it um, got all new caps in there we left the can caps in it but they're disconnected you know for looks so anyway we got all new caps in it and then we like well let's try it again let's see if that fixed the audio even before I tested and yep recapping it fixed the audio I always say um, get rid of them old electrolytics instead of working like a capacitor um, and take a charge once they dry up and all that or short out internally which happens when they dry up um, they act like more like a resistor or a dead short than a capacitor and I'm sure one of the audio capacitors somewhere was um, probably shorted out from being dried up and it acted like a resistor or a short instead of capacitor so we recapped it we got the audio going and the third problem which the um, owner told me about was that when you key it up the um, on modulation the modulation needle just stuck in the right corner um actually it's stuck i think all the time but either way and that was as somebody said on the other video it was a problem with the mode switch and i was not about to replace that mode switch i ain't got time for that so um we d were able to repair it we kind of got out a little thin dremel knife little sharp small knife and we played with some of the edges and of the relay uh, not relay but um of the contacts on the switch and it's got rotary uh, switches or contacts in there and the uh, contacts are extremely close to each other you know too close to have high voltage going through there and this is a tube radio it's high voltage going through there and you got some arcs and stuff like that in there um because 50 year old radio mechanical stuff's kind of shifts shifts 
a little bit and moves around and a few of the contacts were actually touching each other so the um, when you go to modulation the contact of the switch was touching one of the high voltages and hence the meter was always sticking in the corner so we um, reamed it out a little bit carefully with the sharp knife and you know got enough distance between the um, the stators or the rotors of the um, switches and and got it working hopefully it stays that way but you know it's just a meter mod uh, modulation for for the meter so not too critical for the radio anyway but it is nice to have it working right so anyway um, should be all hooked up and that is on average hello hello audio it's keying about four and a half which is really good for browning but there's a reason why it's got a mod in it um, I'll show you that in a minute they um, kind of strap the um, power resistor for it kind of like you do on a tram D201 or D201A and they put a Zener diode in there Zener diode regulates the voltage I like Zeners for that purpose because a resistor the more you pull the more it drops so it's not it's not I guess linear would be the word but um, it's not real well regulated um, what you want is something stable and a Zener diode um, stabilizes voltage so that's good um, I'll do it right quick see that diode in there that's the Zener and that's the power diode I put that 49 on there I'm going to erase that when I'm finished so the owner doesn't um, trip out because that's a nice clean Browning Mark III there so anyway um, with that Zener down there, it's dead keen a four and a half. Most of them do about three and a half. Um, audio, audio, audio. Talking about eight on uh, average. I don't even know what it's doing on peak. Audio, audio, audio. About 18 peak. Um, and that's the meter on uh, Ford and we're gonna go over here to mod audio 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 so that's the mod meter working and radio's very quiet and no issues we had it uh, transmitting for a long time um, um, bumped it kicked it well not literally kicked it but you know bopped it around a little bit make sure everything is stable and nothing with haywire on it and uh, this is a nice example of the um, mark three just the transmitter he dropped by he said the receiver was fine and I'm retiring so I wasn't gonna mess with it um, and I did have a couple customers one is kind of literally bugging me um, about how to get the transmit up or down or what resistor or resistors um, um, you know uh, adjust the watts or what do I need to change and all that other stuff well that 49 I wrote on there that is the resistor to change for the power of a mark 3 that's the dropping resistor that drops the voltage down um, for the RF power tube um, the plate and screen voltages and that's the main power to the um, RF tube they are dropped down some by that resistor right there R49 that's a 2k 2 kilo ohm resistor and this one's a 10 watt the schematic I have um, showed that here R49 as a 4 watt I don't know which one's right or was that upgraded or what but a 2k 10 watt resistor there I think that's original in, in most versions I think it's a um, 10 watt but anyway uh, any 2k 2 kilo ohm 10 watt resistor will work there you don't have to look at the other numbers and what do they mean or what do they do and this is a um, DC voltage power dropping resistor it's on the um, 
DC side of the uh, modulation transformer so it can be wire around it does not have to be non-inductive um, doesn't have to be carbon all that is unnecessary you need that when you have a resistor that is connected to something that has RF going through it or to it um, this does not it's the power side uh, and it's on the modulation side the power side of the transformer at that it does not have RF going through it so a wire round or whatever you want to get is fine for that just get 2k 10 watt for original power if you wanted less power you would up that to maybe a uh, uh, 3.7k 5k depending on how much less watts you do the less watts you do the more modulation percentage you have the louder you sound and if you wanted more watts out of this thing you you could strap another resistor across it in parallel for more if necessary but i think you know you four to four watts out of this thing is fine but you know if you wanted a little more but you're going to have less modulation you know get a 1k or 1.5k um, 10 watt resistor um, if you wanted you know the most power you can get you just run a um, piece of wire and strap that resistor however the more power the more voltage you put on that tube the hotter it's going to run and the um, less time is going to last you know running it full bore by strapping that resistor and the less modulation you're going to have so anyway um 2k resistor if you want more get something a little lower like a 1.5 or or get another 2k and strap on top of it in parallel if you want less power um you know get a 4k you know or, or 5k and replace that or get another resistor like a 1k and 2k and put in series with that resistor but that's the um, power resistor only. That's the only one you need to deal with when um, messing with the um, wattage for a Mark III. Here's another one that goes to the screen, which is that 2 watt resistor there. Um, let me look at the schematic here because I forgot the number of it already. Where are you? Screen R23. That's a 15K. 2 watt resistor and another way of messing with the power with this but it's not as clean when you just mess with the screen only that their resistor goes to the screen and the plate so it'll be more linear by messing with that one for the power but this one is a smaller resistor because it only goes to the screen so a 2 watt is fine and if you go you don't want to go any higher I don't think on the screen because you don't want the screen to be equal to the plate the plate is where the power is and if you make the screen equal to the plate instead of lower the screen the screen has started absorbing power or taking power on its own and the screen is not made for that it's gonna blow the tube and also it's gonna be taking power that should be go out to the plate so you don't want to go um, uh, with the um, lower resistance in it for more watts but you can go a higher resistance like it's 15k now 20k 22k 27k or put like a you know 30 40 50k variable maybe 5 watt resistor in there and then you can dial it up and down and that would be your dial a watt if you want to mess with the screen but again messing with the screen only is not linear it's not that clean um even though some people do it and that's how you have a poor man's dollar watt you mess with the screen there but um, the best and the cleaner way but you need a um, lot bigger resistor is that R49 the power resistor there and that's it don't mess with any other resistors or nothing else and originally again this had 2k 10 watt for 49 and if you wanted less, and I know I did on one guy's radio that really bugged me, um, I put in an additional resistor in series to drop the um, power. And on that one, if you want the power back normal, you just take that additional resistor out. And since I left the original 2K in there, just have the 2K hooked up just like that.
all right been long-winded enough um here it is the uh last of the customers browning mark three and by the way it looks like i just got screwed by paypal on the buddy base i was trying to sell um guy sent me the money but paypal asked for um my tax information so i didn't give it to him and then i sent the money right back didn't claim it didn't put it in my account just uh, uh returned it you know what he sent me i was like nope i ain't giving you the more tax information so i sent it right back and um that was a couple of days ago and paypal just today um not only i don't even know how how this happened but they went into my bank account and they took the money from my bank account and sent it back to him. Now, I don't even understand how that could happen, how that's legal, how that's anything, or somebody, it's like somebody sending you a check. You know, like somebody sending you a million dollar check. You're like, no, 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 not ready for that. No million dollar check for me. And you send it back and, and you know, don't cash it, don't deposit it, no nothing. You're like, no, 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 send it back. And then the bank is like, oh, no, we're taking a million dollars out your account. To me, that's what PayPal did. So as far as I am 100%, 1,000% done with PayPal. You know, I said I was getting out. Um, I'm not going to sell anybody anything anymore. I'm done with it. I'm sick of it. Um, about a month ago, I sold a guy in Australia some parts. And I sent it. And I lost the... Um, uh, since it was Australia, you had to go USPS, the post office, and I lost the receipt. And I sent it priority, which cost me 60 He said, it, you know, it's only going to cost you 30 for priority, which was not true. And I sent it 60 so I was out $60 for shipping and all that. And then the guy, of course, said, you know, it's supposed to be six to nine days. And he waited till the ninth day, and he said he didn't get him and filed a case. And instead of me, you know, waiting to try to say, man, can I send you another set and all that? I just sent him my money back. So that was another $230 gone. So tram doctor.